Want to master Microsoft Graph API? I'll show you everything you need from personal tips and expanding HTTP connectors to setting up app registrations. Let's dive in. Just think of a graph API is the inner webs of almost all products from Microsoft, including the core services, Windows services, Dynamic 360 Business Central services, and also including mobile and security services. Use to access relationships, documents, contacts, or preferences are contextual per user. Just for for example, I am a user, but also a employee. As a employee, I have multiple colleagues that I work with. Not only I'm talking to other users, I'm interacting with files, which share with Teams or SharePoint or anything from Outlook items. For the most part, Graph API is part of that. A lot of Graph API is used to read data or even update data in specific services. Some of the use cases is uh, such as SPFX, where a SharePoint web part that custom web part is to search whoever is logged in and display their own manager the managers above that it can also be used in power automate and powershell power apps custom scripts any application that can call a http request graph explorer is an excellent starting point to understand its capabilities for your specific use case it serves as the front end of the api allowing you to test a variety of endpoints by default, it uses a sample tenant with sample data. If you wish to test an endpoint with your tenant data, a GA or Cloud Azure admin must grant the Graph API app permissions. However, most admins are unlikely to approve this level of access for a production tenant. Therefore, I recommend logging and using your development tenant to test your endpoint. We got the method version of the endpoint and the endpoint URL. On the left, there are multiple endpoints grouped by different categories. Microsoft is always expanding and creating new endpoints, so don't be surprised if the endpoint you want to use is now supported. Relating back to the Power Platforms. Power Automate and Power Apps already have connectors that use Graph API without additional configuration. Looking into Office 365 Users Connector, this is the list of out-of-the-box actions. If you can't find the action you're looking for, you can always select the send an HTTP request action. Go back to the graph API documentation and copy over the endpoint. The Office 365 groups connector is on the same boat. These are the standard actions available in Power Automate, but if the endpoint you're looking for is not there, you can select the send an HTTP request action and then paste in the endpoint you are looking for. Obviously, there are limitations where Graph currently does not support certain actions or functions like every technology, but I still think Graph is a great way to expand the Power Platforms by plugging into other services that doesn't come natively, or to use the authentication through a register app so it doesn't rely on the service account's authentication or permissions. To create an app registration, navigate to Azure, Enter ID, App Registration, Click on New Registration, create a name, and then click Register. After the app registration is completed, go back to the graph documentation and select the endpoint you're going to use. Review the permissions and replicate the permissions to the app registration. After all of the permissions are added, you may have to contact your Azure Cloud admin to grant admin consent for your tenant if it is required. When you're ready to plug it into Power Automate, SPFX, PowerShell, or custom scripts, create a new client secret. Add a description so you know what this certificate is for. Click Add, and then store the value somewhere safe. The value will disappear after you refresh the screen. Now we're ready to use the endpoint in Power Automate. Select the HTTP action, select the method, enter the URI, headers, and then click on Show Advanced Options. Change the authentication to Active Directory OAuth, add in the authority value, tenant ID, audience, client ID, paste in the secret I mentioned earlier, save, and test the flow. The output of the HTTP call should be exactly like how we tested on Graph Explorer. And there you have it. I hope this video is helpful. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to follow for more updates.